Welcome to Laugh and Learn with Vern. I'm your host, Eric Vernson. Check out the new studio. Yeah. Hope you like it. We're going to talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene, GameStop, and what it means going forward. First, I know Marjorie Taylor Greene is accused of saying some anti, some hateful things, as well as some violent rhetoric. So I want to first condemn anyone who says anything that is violent in nature or encourages violence. I 100%. I'm a skilled lover, not a fighter. And I also love everyone. I don't believe in hate. So I totally condemn any of that. Let's talk about her technique and what's, what's going on. She's accused of one thing is uh, spreading conspiracy theories, and I don't want to get kicked off YouTube, so I'm not going to elaborate on what those are. But here's my question for everyone out there. She's accused of these crazy conspiracy theories. As Scott Adams pointed out earlier today on his show, everyone's kind of got a little cue in them. Maybe not the cue, again, not supporting violence, not okay with that, but the idea that everyone kind of believes some things. Do you listen to what Marjorie Taylor Greene says and go, she's crazy. Then you hear a creak in your house and you're like, oh, ghost. What's that about? Do you hear Marjorie Taylor Greene say something and go, that woman is just so nuts. Then you sit down, pop in Netflix, put on that Bob Lazar documentary and immediately start Googling about Area 51. And then start also Googling about secret alien warp speed technology. Do you think the president, former President Trump, excuse me, do you think that former President Trump told people to drink bleach? Because if you believe any of those things, are you really that different than Marjorie Taylor Greene? You might not believe the same thing she does. and She might be way off. How do you know you're right on any of the things that you say or do that other people might think are crazy? So maybe we should all come together and acknowledge that everyone's a little different and we all have our conspiracy theories. We all have our thoughts on the afterlife. We all have our thoughts on aliens. And if you watched my last podcast, so uh, shout out to that one with Dr. Avi Loeb. Alien technology, how we came through our universe. So actually maybe Bob Lazar is not too far off. But my whole point being, maybe we should all be a little more understanding of each other, a little nicer, spring down the temperature a little bit, and acknowledge that, hey, we all have our conspiracy theories. Maybe let's just enjoy each other because at the end of the day, life is short. I also want to point out the fact that Margie Taylor Greene is very similar to someone. I want you to think back to 2018. Who came on the scene, stirred up controversy right away? Certain people immediately wrote her off as just some crazy lunatic with these thoughts and blah, blah, blah. AOC. MTG, I don't know if she calls herself that, but that'd be way better than Marjorie Taylor Greene because Marjorie's kind of a, too long of a name. MTG. She's just like AOC. Another Republican woman, Lauren Boebert, kind of similar. They know how to get attention. It's incredible. I don't know who said it first that any press is good press or good press is good press and bad press. I don't know, whatever. They're both really good at getting attention. And if you want to persuade people, you have to have attention. Look at what Marjorie Taylor Greene's doing. She's causing a whole stir of things right now. I'm not saying she's right. And again, totally condemn anything involving violence, totally condemn anything that involves hate. Just see how she's getting, and people on the left are saying, ah, she's crazy, but people on the right, and I have the I have the receipts, so I'm involved in groups on both the left and the right, so I hear a lot of what's going on. My friends on the right, even, even a few months ago, AOC is crazy. Well, is she? She's literally got people to say for the last couple of years about the Green New Deal being a good deal. Just remember that. This new wave of Republican congresswomen coming through, it's very impressive how they're able to get attention. And I think the battle over the next couple of years between these different groups of women that are just so skilled at getting attention and then using persuasion techniques is going to be fascinating to follow. 
So all I'm saying, again, no violence, no hate, just looking at the techniques. Why does Marjorie Taylor Greene have anything to do with GameStop? Well, let's talk about GameStop. We now have this group of millennials and younger people that grew up through the crash of 08. I'm one of them. I graduated college in spring 2009. At the time, I was drinking, partying, chasing chicks. I didn't really know what was going on. I knew the market was bad, but whatever. Then really, it's hard to find a job. And I found a job and didn't really pay anything. And I said, well, I'm going to try to ride this out and go to law school. Well, it ended up working out. Kind of. No, it didn't. I'm happy. Whatever. But that was just, that wasn't really a great plan to just ride things out. I didn't realize how bad things were. Look at what happened to the people that were involved in 2008. How many of them went to prison? How many of them were doing hard time? The answer is not many. And I have to, you can fact check me on this, but I believe Lloyd Blankfein was the CEO of Goldman when all that went down. And I also believe that Lloyd Blankfein over the years after that received major bonuses. So you have a generation of people that grew up through that and they saw it and told me their parents got their lives ruined and they couldn't find jobs and now all of a sudden they found a way to fight back against some of the people and the system they think screwed them over. Look at Marjorie Taylor Greene. She learned how to fight. Again, not physical fighting, but she learned how to battle in the political realm. Probably from watching someone like, I don't know, say Trump. Trump helped inspire a generation of Republicans to figure out what they need to do in politics. Look what she said, Marjorie Taylor Greene said. She's not apologizing. Who else didn't apologize? Trump. Look at what these GameStop people are doing. They are fighting back against a system that they feel hasn't worked in their favor. And I think you're going to continue to see this groundswell of populism as, it go, as time goes on. And one of the most fascinating things about GameStop is that it's reuniting people on the left and right. You've already seen you know, AOC bring up again, uh, similar Don, Don Trump Jr., you know, both tweeting about the same things. I mean, how often have you ever seen that? And how often will you ever see that again? Maybe never. But you have people on the left and right who have these populist ideas. And I've, like I've talked to, to friends, which you wouldn't know, but I have. And I think that a lot of them have, we have similar thoughts on, on helping the lower and middle classes uh, to raise up. It's just different ways of getting to the same solution. I think you're starting to see with, with GameStop, especially, you're starting to see people learn on how to do that. So I think it's going to be really, uh, this week's going to be really fascinating because those, the GameStoppers are entrenched in. So I have full disclosure, I do have one share of GameStop and I do have one share of AMC. I had more, but I ended up making a nice profit on, on GameStop. And I, if it dips the right price, same thing with AMC, I will get back in again because I think this is not investment advice. I think there's a great chance I could go up because I don't know how the short squeeze necessarily works. I don't know how many short sellers are still out there, but there's, there's a few, but you're starting to see this with this Marjorie Taylor Green, GameStop. There's a swell of people that are like, the system isn't working. And I think I know how to push back against it. It's just a really fascinating time to be alive. And I hope that people can continue to find creative, nonviolent ways to change and, and push back against systems they don't agree with. It's all for tonight. I hope you all have a great week. And I will talk to you later.